Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Fallon. Welcome to this video. Today I'm going to answer another question from the webinar question answered series. Um, and this one is from my uh, Altering the Vertical Dimension Case Studies webinar. And this question is from Dr. Christopher Tavares. Tavares, I wonder if you're related to John Tavares, the captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. If you are, can you message me? Because my wife would love to get her jersey signed. <laughs> if you're related to Captain John. He's a good guy, by the way, from what I can tell. And an Ofo boy from my town, so pretty cool. Big favorite of my wife and son. Anyway, um, uh, Christopher said, what brilliant and exceptional work. Thank you very much. Um, so thank you for the webinar. In case three, in hollowing out the palatal surfaces of the upper anterior teeth, will you not lose anterior guidance? Thank you. And what uh, Christopher is referring to there is, in case three, where we open the vertical beyond the PIC, beyond the point of initial contact, we open the vertical a fair amount for this patient because he had really worn posterior teeth, but also worn anterior teeth. Um, some of these people where you're opening beyond the PIC, they have some speech issues. So he had some speech issues and he felt that his upper front teeth were too thick on the palatal. So um, the cingulum, I think, was just a little too thick. And so what we ended up doing, his speech issue was S. And with S sound issues, we often just hollow a little in front of the um, centric stop a little bit to create more space for airflow and to give the patient a little more room to function. Dr. Peter Dawson used to call this long centric. So we create a bit of long centric and that tends to help with speech issues. I try to do this by marking the centric stop first and then hollow, kind of hollowing out the palatal surface a little beyond the centric stop. So forward of it, which sometimes could affect protrusive guidance. Now, most of these cases, we try to start protrusive guidance on the cuspids anyway, so this shouldn't be an issue. If you did find that you lost your protrusive guidance, you can equilibrate wherever it is in the posterior provisionals, assuming it's not on the cuspids. Most of the time, it'll be on the cuspids. Usually, this hollowing out of the palatal surface of the anteriors is on the incisors, not the cuspids, so it doesn't affect the guidance lateral protrusively. Sometimes forward, straight protrusive, it'll affect the guidance, uh, the protrusive guidance, which we try to design then on the cuspids. Again, if you have it on the posterior tooth, you just would remove that interference. Um, if you find that you lose your centric stop doing this, um, you may have to rebuild it. So you go, that's why you go to market first before you adjust this. So you try not to adjust it. If you find you had to adjust it, you'll have to then equilibrate the provisionals. So you just equilibrate the entire provisional rehab until you closed it down to the point that um, you have the centric stop again. Um, that's pretty rare to have that happen. Uh, usually, again, you'd mark the anterior centric stop and hollow slightly a bit in front of that. Um, try not to lose the centric stop. Again, um, if you did equilibrate the whole provisional rehab, because it was just too open or you lost the centric stop and you didn't want to add it back, you wanted to equilibrate down. If you do that, just be careful not to equilibrate down so far that you've now made the restorations too thin and you have to re-prepare the posterior restorations occlusally. Um, ideally, you'd want to keep the rehab open enough that uh, you don't have to do something like that. Um, so these are just things to consider with uh, adjusting the occlusion. Usually it's a very small adjustment for phonetics. Um, and a lot of the time I wouldn't do a lot of that the day that we insert the provisionals because when you're opening the vertical beyond the PIC, it sometimes takes a week or two to get used to. So I have the patient come back a week later and we'd adjust any phonetic issues then. Sometimes it takes another adjustment. So we might do a couple small adjustments. I'd rather do that than a huge adjustment right off the bat because um, I just think, again, a huge adjustment, you might be adjusting quite a bit more than you need to, and I'd rather do it in smaller segments with these bigger cases. So hopefully that helps. Um, if you'd like to see that case or some of the other cases that I've altered the vertical dimension with, you can go to videoseminar.com. That's videoseminar.com. And uh, register for this webinar. Thank you very much. Take care.